Hello, we are going to be discussing pegs in Tomb Boom Harmony. This is a follow-up video to the previous introduction to on drawing nodes. The first thing we need to do when working with pegs is to go to edit and to our preferences and activate two very specific preferences. Default set per position for pegs is one of the most important. And then if we go over to our advanced tab, and go down to element node animate using animation tools default value make sure this is off what are pegs and how do we get them so if you go over to your drawings select one and hit Control p and you'll get a single peg with the name of the drawing or if you select both of them and hit shift Control p you'll get two pegs if you hold two of them and you hit Control p you'll get one peg between them and it will just be called peg so what is a peg? A peg is like a arm coming in and manipulating a drawing. So a drawing is just a flat piece of paper on a table and your arm is coming in and you're picking it up and putting it somewhere else on the table. Now, this is an illusion. The drawing hasn't moved. If we turn the peg off or delete it, you'll see that it returns to the same location that it was previously. You can always reset position on a peg by hitting OR on your keyboard. So it automatically will go back to where the drawing was. What is the peg doing? The peg is creating a keyframe in the timeline. You go to your timeline and then go to the peg. And you can click this plus. You'll see all of the information on the peg. This is recorded in the timeline through keyframes. So you see each of these things, position X, Y, Z, scale, skew. So each of these tools up top are going to give this another keyframe somewhere else. This is what was done when we went to our preferences and changed that one option. So if you go to the layer properties on a peg by clicking the yellow, you can see that position is set to separate. Default, it will be set to 3D path, which is not what we're looking for with rigged animation. 3D path is more for cameras and movement and stuff like that. So we're going to want to make sure that everything is set to separate. So if you were set to a peg position to 3D path, you'll notice that all of the positions for X, Y, and Z have been condensed down into one singular piece of information. So if you move it, it's going to set information for each of them on one single layer. There was a really good video by Brain on the differences between 3D paths and separate pegs. Highly recommend. So what's the purpose of a peg in relation to rigging? When rigging, you set up a hierarchy of pegs that interact with one another, so you don't have to individually move each piece every single time you need to do something. For example, this is an arm, a very basic looking arm, and we have two pegs. We have a drawing for the bottom piece and a drawing for the top piece. Both pegs are in the same position. The smack bang in the middle, every time you make a peg, it will place it exactly in the middle of the scene. If you were to move both pegs, rotate, they will rotate exactly from that position. Now, for an arm, that's not very useful because say you want to move an arm. You go, well, I need the shoulder to be over here, but the elbow over here, and then now I need the bottom of the drawing to be over here, and then rotate a bit like this, and then you have to line them up. Severely inconvenient. So instead, you make a hierarchy. For example, let's go to the arm top and make a new peg. It will always preference it with another dash P, so you can go in and change the name. I like to use pluses, so am top plus bot. A lot of people don't. You can name it underscore bot. Some people name it master if it's at the very top of a peg. Or again, if it's the very top of a peg, you can say alt. So if we plug that in, now this one peg is controlling both of these pegs. We want to move these pivots on both of these pegs up top, so the arm rotates from the shoulder. To do that, we go over to the rotation tool. So if we grab both of these and move the peg to the very top, it'll place the pivot diff for both pegs. And now, if we rotate the shoulder, both drawings will move. And then we rotate the elbow, it'll move from the correct position. I put out a short 
on how to get a perfect pivot position for pegs like this, which you can find either linked down the video or in the description. So as you build more of the rig, so we have our arms, let's make a hand, and signify the hand with a circular shape. We want this hand to now follow the wrist. So we make a new peg, we plug it in, we connect it to the hand, and then we rename it, and bar, and, and then we move the pivot down to the hand. So if we move the shoulder, we can now move the elbow, and now move the hand, and everything will follow each other. This is the foundation of rigging. The more drawings you have, the more of a hierarchy you'll start building up and up and up. The amount of pegs you use depends on you. So some would say that you wouldn't need this peg because the hand will always want to follow the lower arm. So you can plug a peg directly into another peg if you know that they will always move together no matter what. And like previously mentioned, pegs are super useful because if you do a bit of animation and it's really terrible or janky or something's broken, rather than fixing it, you can either reset the peg, get rid of them, or just get rid of the keyframes. So as you build up your hierarchy, your timeline will start to look like this, where you have an arrow pointing down, an arrow pointing down, an arrow pointing down. This is showing that each of these are connected. So this would be the parent peg. This would be the parent peg of the next one. This would be the parent peg of the next one. You can minimize these individually or have them all open. If you're looking for a very specific peg in your timeline, so I want to only focus on the hand, but the timeline is closed, you can select the peg for the hand, go to the timeline and hit O and it will find that peg for you. To navigate your pegs, you hit the letter B on your keyboard and it will go up the pegs. And if you hold Shift B, it'll go down the pegs. This will save you time when animating so you don't have to constantly come over to the node view and click on what peg you need. All of this information is saved on keyframes, which you can move around, you can adjust. So I want there to be animation over here that is different from the one previously. You can animate, move, rotate. So now these two keyframes will have different information on them. You can add keyframes and remove keyframes with these two buttons here. So this will delete it. Or you can go to the center and make a new keyframe. With pegs, so you have these two bits of animation like this. If you select your peg and come over here, set motion keyframe, which will cause a tween between these two pegs like this. So it's telling the program, this is the perfect even amount of movement between each of these keyframes to get from point A to point B. You can also turn that off by hitting set stop motion keyframe. So like stop motion, it'll move frame by frame. So you can actually manipulate this linear tween. If you select your peg and go to these tools, set ease for multiple parameters, set ease for selected keyframes, quick ease out, quick ease in, quick ease. So generally I use this. You look at a graph, you pull this handle like this. So apply, bring close. So now, what is the practical application for pegs? So we're going to show this example using the ball again, where we have our floor and we have our ball. If we go to the ball peg, we'll see that the pivot is in the center. Turn on this option here, you can see the center of the screen. So we want to grab the rotation tool, grab the pivot and move it like this. So now it's permanently there. If you try and move the pivot where anything else, so we go to the transform tool and we move the pivot, it will move it for this single frame. But the next time we go off and back on, it'll be repositioned. So we have our ball and our pivot and we set a keyframe. So we can go two frames and we can move the ball. We want to see our previous animation. So we turn on onion skin like, like so. If you have a shape that has been skewed or animated in any kind, you can go to the transformation tool and hit or on your keyboard. 
and it will reset it back to what it was previously. Now, our animation has been made, but it's been misplaced. So what we can do is we can grab the ground peg and move it up to match, or we can make a new peg, call it scale, and we can enlarge the drawing. We can make a new peg on top of that and call it position peg. And then position it down. So now we have all of these pegs set. If you want a previous shape, you can go to the keyframe, copy, paste. Now you have that shape again. So this is one way to use pegs. This is very reminiscent of how we done in the drawing video. So we're doing individual keyframes for the ball, but there's only one drawing substitution on the drawing. So this saves us having to draw multiple shapes. Another way to animate with pegs is by using the tweening method. So if we have our ball in the middle, go to the middle frame, bring it down, highlight everything, so tween. So now it'll tween, but in a perfectly even way. If you want to see how this is affected, you can go and turn on your onion skin. So you can see the motion. So if you go to your little graph editor, you can set your curves. And if we hit play, one of the main benefits for using pegs is the drawing substitutions. If you were to do this by hand or use multiple drawing substitutions, you would have to go through and recolor and you'll have to do that constantly. So if you just do it once, have one drawing substitution, you can color, fill, and now the entire animation is colored. I'm currently setting up a wall drawing against the ground for the ball to bounce behind and in front of. For this example, we're going to be talking about how a peg can move not only left and right and in every direction, but it can also move forward and back in Z depth. So when we play our animation with this wall, the ball is consistently behind the wall. So what we do is we make a new peg. And if we select our transformation tool, go to the second instance of the ball touching the ground, we can pull the ball forward by holding Alt and using the arrow keys to push back and forth. You can see this more clearly if you go up to the gray area up here and open up coordinate, you get all of these options and you can see 0.001F. So that means that ball is one forward, one back, like so. By default, it will be zero. So anything you pull forward will be in front of everything else in your scene. Anything you push back will be behind everything else. It now gives the illusion that the ball has depth to it. It's going behind and in front. So that is how pegs work. With drawings and pegs covered, that means there's only one more video left to do to cover the fundamentals, which is the formers that should be coming next week. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.